Joining us tonight is KT McFarland, former Deputy National Security Advisor to President Trump, author of the new book, Revolution, Trump, Washington, and We the People. KT, great to have you with us. Uh, I, I've got to start with the national security strategy put up on the website, uh, whitehouse.gov, without an author, without a department uh, named in, in any context. And I just had the president's trade czar attack me, Michael Pillsbury, because we think it is somewhat short of being a national security strategy of any kind. What is your view? Throw it in the trash. I mean, that's not doesn't reflect what President Trump's thinking. And President Trump himself is is actively engaged in the China policy. He knows it's the most important national security issue we face right now, how to deal with China, how to deal with China's ambitions. China wants to come out of this pandemic having replaced the United States as the dominant power in the world. And, Lou, I, I talk to the people in the White House National Security Council on China. I talk to other people at the senior levels of government, and that's not how they're thinking. I mean, they're, they're much more hawkish than this sort of wimpy little document proposes. They're, they're looking at supply chains. Bring the supply chains home. C create a coalition, the United yeah. States, United Kingdom, like-minded democracies and free market systems, and, and potentially, potentially, even decouple from China if China doesn't want to play by the rules. Yeah, it's extraordinary, because that document, such as it is, as I said, doesn't have an author, isn't related to yeah. a, 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 an agency or a department, and thirdly, doesn't once quote the president of the United States, who is leading policy in every aspect of foreign policy uh, around the world. There is no exception, as you point out. Uh, and it's stunning because it looks like the deep state is at work now, having figured out some way to append this nonsense uh, to the uh, White House uh, website and also get a trade czar uh, to defend the nonsense. I have a feeling, Lou, that President Trump watches your show, as you know, he watches it regularly. My suspicions is that in a couple of days, that kind of nothing burger report is going to find its way off the White House website. There's nothing there that reflects President Trump's thinking. And it sounds to me like it was just written by a bunch of bureaucrats who are saying, well, this should be our China policy, so let's just put it up the flagpole. I, you know, look, it's, I don't taking it seriously. I'm not taking it seriously in the least, because that's certainly not how President Trump is approaching the entire issue. Right. Well, let's turn to uh, serious issues like right now. Uh, China, uh, the president has done so much, has achieved so much. He achieved balanced uh, trade. Uh, he brought tariffs forward. Yeah. Uh, this is a man who has uh, assumed a modest foreign policy. I said modest. I didn't say passive. Uh, he, uh, Obama was passive in every possible respect. Yeah. Patience, uh, uh, strategic patience. This president yeah, that was his policy. Uh, <laughs> has never, has ne you know, I mean, the fact of the matter is, uh, in his strategy was working beautifully. And, uh, you know, suddenly we have this virus. And it, there is this, this, uh, this attempt, it seems, on, on the part of Wall Street, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, for, uh, for example, to basically declare, you know, we're done here. China made a little mistake and didn't warn us and had every opportunity to do so, and 100,000 Americans are dying, uh, and likely f more than that. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't understand why we're not seeing greater outrage from the Republican Party. It's as if the, uh, the, uh, the brain trust, as such it is, and yes, I am being extraordinarily uh, facetious uh, on Capitol Hill, those Republicans, uh, to suggest that, you know, you can just simply accept 100,000 American deaths as collateral damage to a communist dictator who decided not to warn the world about the deadly contagion that he had unleashed on the world. Look, they, they, they realized they had a problem, and so they restricted travel within China, and yet they let travel go internationally from Wuhan to Europe to all over the place. They, in effect, they sent human bioweapons all around the world. And what are they doing now? 
Well, they're buying up uh, at fire sale prices technology companies, resource companies. They're taking a position in the world international organizations that they're the moral leader of the world. And look what they've just done in Hong Kong today. They're now crushing Hong Kong. They they had a deal with Hong Kong. It wasn't that many years ago where they said, we, you can have your own system, we'll have ours, we'll be one China. They're reneging on the deal. Five years ago, the Chinese went and said the South China Sea, but now look, they've militarized it. And the United States response uh, right now uh, is has been neutralized. Uh, I think that's fair to say. And we await the next round. Your thoughts as yeah. we wrap up? Oh, I think President Trump, he, he knows he's got a problem, and he knows this is the last chance to stand up to China. I have no doubt that he doesn't shy away from a fight, and he knows when he's convinced, and he's convinced it's the right thing to do, he'll carry it out. I have no doubt he's going to have the strongest China policy anybody can imagine in his second term. KT McFarland.